Folks, welcome back to the channel. So today in this video, what we do is two things. It's a research session and it is an outreach, basically, session as well. So in the first part of the video, we actually reach out to a supplier and we talk about just getting some things clarified before we order a sample for a product. And um, so they're really good questions if you're ordering a product, just to make sure you ask if they make sense for your product. And then we transition into product research and we actually find a number of products. After a slow start, we do find a number of products and we show you a new way to do product research as well with Keepa. So enjoy, buckle up, and don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you soon. Right, folks. Hello and welcome to the training. Hope you're all doing well. Tux, star student, you are here. Um, so how has the week been? It's been good. Um, just finalizing my product sample with Perfect. suppliers. So I think just making sure everything is as it should be in terms of what I'm getting, what their delivery time scales are. Um, what else? and the costs. Oh, good stuff, the most important. So if I recall, Tux, because um, we did a call um, earlier in the week, or last week, so basically, have you confirmed that we're looking for like-for-like -for -like products, that they're the same product? I have. Some yeah. of them are. Um, I have to pull something up. I was going to say, just another note on when you're reaching out to suppliers um, and you're getting information for samples or orders, um, one thing that I would recommend that you do is ask for, you're probably already doing this, but ask for photographs, like more like more detailed photographs. So usually suppliers will send out generic photographs of products that they sell as a part of a catalog. Um, my recommendation would be to ask them for more specific details of the features of a product. So if, for example, you are, um, say for example, you've chosen a product um, and you know there are specific features you need to, need to know about, ask the supplier specifically what photographs you want and they'll send you them. Um, but that's one thing I think most, both me and Peter have learned over the past couple of years is that um, you need to keep checking on these things. Because um, sometimes these suppliers work with dozens of different Amazon and e-commerce sellers. So things can become pretty streamlined for them and fast, which is fantastic. But also you don't want them to cut corners and you ended up with a, a defective product or something that isn't exactly how you wanted it. So whether you, whether it's the sample stage of speaking with the supplier or the first order or anything like that, just get um. I lost you. End of... We lost the very end of you, Alex, but you can keep going. Yeah, just ask for photographs, basically, is what I'm saying. I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to move shortly. I'm going to go back to where I usually do my calls from my from my internet because this I'm, I'm at a hotel and the internet is, keeps coming and going. Yeah, you're all right. You're all right. That's actually a really good idea, Tux, um, as Alex said, just to get the photographs because it just does leave, it leaves you in a in a better position because you, you know more about the, you know more about the supplier as well because if they're willing to give you lots of photographs and, and specific photographs, you can end up like building that rapport with them better. Whereas mm -hmm. if they didn't have access to those photos, they're very generic. It shows they don't care too much. But I think you have a pretty good supplier, if I recall, um, in the bag as far as I know. Yeah, so, I think Mandy or Maple. I can't remember. Her name. Uh, Maple, I think, but I, I I'm not really yeah. sure. But basically, you're ready now. You think to proceed with a sample? Yeah. So what did they come back with in terms of sample cost? Um, I think it was 188. Um, was it DDP? A delivery, delivered, delivered duty paid. Yeah, 188. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, that's very, look, that it is what it is. I never liked paying for samples like that, but it's just one of these things. And you can always mm -hmm. negotiate that. You know, if you move ahead with the order, they can take that off the order. Often they'll do yeah. that. Absol yeah. Absolutely. Um. And then in terms of profitability, if I recall in the product, it was all very good as well. Um, yeah. So I think your, what I would do in your position now is because you have this product and we're kind of, we're happy with it, right? And mm -hmm. we've agreed everything in terms of like the free and board price works. Um, have you agreed with the supplier in terms of like putting your label on the product and all that? Has that any of that been done yet? I haven't sent her the sample logo. 
Remember, I was meant to I remember that. mock something up in Canva just okay. to send to her. And that's included, though, in the price she's given you, isn't it? I haven't confirmed that yet. Okay. So I think what needs to happen is we need to prepare an email that confirms how the product is basically, like how do they package it and then the labels and stuff we want on the product. Mm -hmm. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to open um, a Google Doc and I'm going to share it and we're going to write that email and then you can send that to the supplier. Is that, is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. Okay, let me just get set up for that. Stuff. And then I think yeah, you're good to go. And then what I would do, Tux, then for you, I would actually move on and actually just keep looking for other products because mm. you're in, this is in process, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Supplier reply. Well, let me just share my screen and we'll get set up. Hello. And then we have name. Okay. Trust this email finds you well. I am looking forward to shortly proceeding with a sample order prior to um, sample order, right? Um, however, before I do so, there are a number of items which I would be grateful if you could clarify. So number one, um, do, you don't have the logo yet, but I can attach it here. Um, can you attach this logo? Where did you want to put that logo, Tux? I think on the frame. That's where most of the other brands have it. So they've got it in two places along the frame, but we could just put it in one, to be honest. Yeah. So can you touch so at the top? Product. Somewhere How top right. Do or top you left. propose to attach the logo? So let's see what they say. That's two nice questions. Ideally, top right of the product. So number two, the next question is, are you able to um okay how is the product packaged how is the product packaged um, are you able to attach my label sticker to the customer carton And you got the dimensions, Tux, of how many units are in a in a master carton. So, like the the carton that carries a pile of units, didn't you? Hold on, I so did I, from I, someone, but I have to check to see if it was Mandy. Because it was you. somebody did give me dimensions mm -hmm. the mass for six in a master carton, but mm -hmm. it wasn't Mandy. It was uh, sorry, it wasn't Maple. It was someone else. Okay, how is the product package for the customer? Um, how many units can fit in the master? And for carton, um, can you please confirm dimensions of these? Um, okay, looking good. Okay. Six cartons. Anything else you'd include, Alex? Was that fairly summarized, doesn't it? I think that was a carry bag, although she has responded. She said they can make one, um, but they don't have pictures. So I'm guessing it will be a custom order for me. And this is for this woman here. Yes. Okay. Um. What? Okay. Are you able to provide a sample of the carrier bag? And number two, 
um, what would the free and board price, including the carrier, A lot of questions there, but if she summarizes all that, we'd be in a very good position. We'd know everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is there anything else you think um would be useful for you now? Right now, off the top of my head, no. I think it's I think it's pretty good. If we get them all clarified, she's pretty quick getting back to us. So yeah. Once I have clarification. I should be able to move forward. Sample and hopefully test production. Do you and the MOQ on this order is not big, is it not? The MOQ has is three hundred. And what's that work out in terms of costs for us? Um, the unit price is. If you want the bag, it's fifteen something. Yeah. So it's a bit, it's an extra couple of dollars for the bag. Well, it was thirteen dollars without the bag, wasn't it? Without the bag, yeah. To be honest with you, with the extra dollar, I think it's worth it. We so with the bag, it's fifteen forty, and without the bag, it's thirteen eighty. And they're free on board. Yeah. All right. So maybe we don't need to ask that question. Um. We want to know if the carrier bag is of good quality, though. See, maybe she can stick your logo on the carrier bag. Yeah, that's also an option. Yeah. Would, let me say, would it be preferable? It probably won't be. I'd say it's easier to put it on the actual product, but it would be preferable to place my logo on the carrier bag. Once I've cleverage on these matters, I should be able to move forward with a sample and should all be in order. I'll be in order a, a test batch to gain test batch to bring the product to market. Looking forward to hearing in regards. How was that? It's fair. Okay. It should be in order. It's supposed to bring the product to market. Yep, I think that's absolutely fine. So if you send that to the supplier, we we'll literally do it now. Um, we should have an answer pretty soon. And once we have the answer on that, we should be able to move forward with the sample. Um, like if you think everything's going to be okay there, you can move forward with the sample. But I think it's best just to get this answered, these questions answered first, and then take it from there. Then move forward. I agree. With the sample. You've downloaded Keeper, haven't you? Yes. I'm going to try Keepa as a product research tool. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see now. Let me see. Zoom, share screen. All right. Let me see. Are we still recording? We are. Um, so we're inside Keepa here, right? Now, what Keepa is, it's basically the tool we use to find, like, you know, the BSR history, the price history, and the order quantity of a product, right? Going forward into the past, basically, right? We can also use to kind of predict the um, future as well, right? So if I recall one of these columns, data, and we go to best product best sellers, let's just pick a category. I should have good internet now. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay, this is the way it works, right? So at the moment, the most, now this is interesting, Alex, see the most popular product in home and kitchen in the UK at the moment? The Brita water filter. <laughs> I remember those. Filter. Yeah, yeah, the carriages for drop shipping. <laughs> um, okay, so we're just trying a different way here. We're just doing some product research, and I want to see, can I use this to um, basically just go into this and see if we find products, but I want to just go right down. Like reverse engineer almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see if we extend this further than... I mean, even if you don't find products in here, this you'll definitely find, like pockets of products um, which you can segue off in Amazon see I've just put it to 5,000 now so it's, just gonna, it's a bit slow at loading this but this would be very mm -hmm. cool so do you understand what we're doing Tox? yeah I do 
Yeah, it's an interesting way of just getting the list like right through like, you know, every number. And what I try and do, sometimes a little hint, I try and find pictures that look bad. Because that's an example. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I can click into it and have a look and explore. It might not work out first, but it's definitely worth trying. Um, I've, I've just seen something. It's quite high up. Yeah. I've never heard of the brand, so I don't know if it's a private label. Mm-hmm. It's um the condensation removers, the dehumidifier um packets. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So if, you got a link? Put put a link in the chat. Um, sure. Give me a second. Let's have a quick look at this product. Where do I find the link? down the bottom there's a wee, funny wee. talks me and peter keep saying god the people that are in this course uh in our coaching at the minute like mm -hmm. I don't they realize how valuable it is compared to what it will be in the next year or so it'll obviously be more valuable as well but the fact that we can actually just sit on a call with yourself and just work one-to-one -one like this or even when there's two or three or four people on a call is is insane <laughs> i wish i had this when i was starting yeah i know like I told Peter, that's actually why I signed up because I've been seeing these courses and I've been thinking I'll take one. And then Peter showed up on TikTok. I was like, okay. So Tux, I've just searched on Amazon here, condensation remover, which is kind of like what I would class as the most generic key term for that product. And the search results have come back and there's less than a thousand search results, which is great. Yeah. Um, the market though, straight away. I mean, I can share my screen and show you if yeah, Peter will let me. Let me give you. Um... Yeah. I'll show you, and uh, this is this will be useful for anybody watching this as well about like um, analyzing markets quickly. I'll just share my screen now so you can see. I'm just gonna keep my camera off because my light my lighting's not actually great. So, okay. um, can you see my screen now? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you see here, I've searched condensation remover. And we've got 970 search results, which is really good so far. But then mm -hmm. when we come down to these products, just straight away, you're hit with a number of different products in different pack sizes, yeah. uh, different styles. And st straight away, I'd be, I'd be ruling this product out straight mm -hmm. away because it's just too confusing. Um, there may be different types of humidifier removers or dehumidifier traps, but this, this in itself, to me is i wouldn't i wouldn't touch this market um just I, I, you could you could go and get some numbers and stuff for it but just by looking at this for me i would rule this out based on the fact that we've got different pack sizes different colors different brands and as a customer or a consumer they really aren't going to know what they want i don't personally mm. think so we've got a 10 pack here we've got a 12 pack we've got 500 mil um things uh, so uh, is that slightly different no we've got 500 mil there and then they got these different styles of hanging so this is different see hanging wardrobe dehumidifiers this 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 could be interesting so let me search um wardrobe dehumidifier so you might be able to segue off this product so this is come back with three thousand results and same same thing again here um and then there's a couple of different styles so let me just search hanging so we've got less results there. Mm, again, same same situation. Um, I was thinking that maybe we could look into different styles of these dehumidifiers, but it seems to me yeah. this is way too competitive, way too confusing. Mm. But what we could do is we could go into one of these products and we could come down to products related to this item this is how i would segue into different markets and products so um like this could be a fairly lukewarm area where you may find product opportunities and as i'm scrolling through this products related to section when we've got 35 pages here of products which is a lot now what i'm looking for specifically here is anomaly products so products that aren't dehumidifier things so I'm looking to see if I can find products that stand out as non dehumidifier bags or products that I can segue off and go into different 
little like different product opportunities, if that makes sense, different markets and niches. Um, you'll find a lot of these will be related to dehumidifiers, but sometimes you will find different styles of dehumidifiers or different products altogether, which can be a handy place to segue into different categories. So I'm going to see if I can find um, anything here. So we've got, I think, did you look into these, the moth repellents? So I'll open that up. Mark, I remember you looked into something like that, did you not? Or was that... Um, I was did that the, yeah. the naphthalene walls that are toxic. Hmm. Great market only for the toxic, oh, toxicity. The product. <laughs> toxicity. Let's have a... <laughs> so I'm doing that. something cool here in Psykeepa. I'm actually setting... I'm trying to figure out a way to use the data to set it just for FBM products. So you're trying to do a different style of research. Yeah, I'm just it's completely new. It may not work at all, but interesting. Let me just segue oh. through here. So we don't have that much in there. And again, you've got different, even more here, 58 potential pages to go through. There's all this, all this stuff you can suck up juice from. Um, and now if we just if I now go to where's that tab I just opened? Here it is. So we've now we've got moth balls. So I think we or moth repellent. So I think I think we um so these these here say all natural ingredients. Um the the what were the ingredient what was the ingredient you found, Tux, that wasn't allowed? It's unpronounceable. Okay. It's funny chemical. I don't remember. I think DPT or something, that's short for what it is. I think. So I've searched moth repellent. Um mm -hmm. I think these are similar to what these are like cedar balls. These are very similar to what you looked into, weren't they? I looked into this market. Not exactly. Back. There were these white balls. Yeah. Not so these the are one. these. This is interesting. So we've got four hundred results, which is a great start. Um, I would usually when I come into a market, I would always ignore the sponsor products. So if you're analyzing a market for how many potential com like competitors there are in a market disregard all the people that have sponsoring products like go go past these because obviously pay money to be there so we can't really count that as um a legit bit of data um so we have these moth killers here i guess these are going to be fresh and interesting lavender filled bag that's interesting um Lavender filled bags, insect moth repellent for clothes. That's interesting. Yeah. I'll open. I'll open that and save that. Cedarwood rings. We've got mothballs here. See, some of these are selling quite well, which is interesting. There's some more sponsored products here. See, th th this to me is an interesting market, but it's still. To me, it's still airing on that side of confusing. Um, it's, it's still not a very clear decision for a consumer to decide, right, that's exactly what I need to buy. Because if we started to sell in this, I'm just thinking, well, how would we actually stand out? Because there's different moth traps. We've got sprays. We've got cedar balls, cedar blocks, cedar rings. And a lot of them do very similar stuff. Um, so I, I would be... I would be fairly hesitant going to this market, but what we can do is we can do the same same as before and click into one of the products and go down to the products related to. Mm -hmm. um, another tip as well, if you do actually come across a, a product that is worth pursuing or you think is worth pursuing and you're at the stage of, okay, well, how do I improve this product or offer? Sometimes in this section here, this frequently bought together, this can give you some very good ideas on what customers are buying with this specific product. So sometimes, not always, but sometimes you could actually use this section here to create a very unique offer because obviously you're, the, Amazon's telling you, right, a customer is buying these cedar balls and they're also buying these cedar hangers with it. And then you start thinking, well, is there a way that I can create an actual pack that has these two products together? which would create a superior offer. So it's just a little mm -hmm. tip for you. Um, so if we come down to products related to this item and same process again, 
just scroll through and product research is a funny one because I, I know it's not just going to be yourself watching this tux but um sometimes it can feel like pulling teeth okay and i don't want people to get disheartened with this because sometimes you can literally research for hours and feel like you aren't making any progress but then other times you will literally just happen to find yourself in absolute gold mines of products and it can happen so fast and and from what i've experienced as soon as you start finding a product or even two products or opportunities sorry you'll you'll generally find more and more in that area as we did on the previous training call when we were looking at like um i think it was gold those um the corn the, the corner goal um nets i think it was or something like that um like i i found a number of different product opportunities on that training call and afterwards just because we were happened to be in that area so you, you'd be surprised how fast things can change around with this okay um i'll tell you what do you want to have you got anything interesting going on your screen there peter that's worth sharing well i just i'm just going to keep looking through this see if i can find anything interesting i found some things um, alex but they're not really nothing groundbreaking yet um unfortunately um i'm just going i'm just scrolling along here but i'm, I'm in home and kitchen so it's not the best market to be in at the very low bsrs right. um but still i'm just scrolling here lavender filled bags let's have a quick look at that so i would always whenever i'm doing product research as well and i'm looking for a market i would always take the most generic key term out of the title and to me this would be lavender filled bags i mean you could say would would a customer search fragrant lavender filled bags i don't know about that i probably would say lavender filled bags but we will see what this pops up with this is interesting. So this is now opening up a different market altogether. So this is a, this is looking at wheat bags, and yeah, they go in the microwave, and... don't they? Yes, yeah, so you put them in the microwave. Yeah. So these are interesting though, because these are um, natural fragrant lavender filled bags. I don't know if you put those in the microwave, or maybe you would. Interesting. I like, I probably wouldn't go into this market. I'm just finding it interesting how we've managed to land on this market. I'm gonna come back a bit. Let's go down here. Let's try and get out of this and see if we can find some bit a little bit more attractive. Um, I think we do have them, lavender heat packs. I just checked. Oh, you do? Yeah. I probably I think wouldn't... they put lavender in with the wheat. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so it gives them a scent as well, I would have thought. Mm. I probably... It might be worth looking into, but just off that first glance when I was looking at it, I think it probably wouldn't be a market worth considering. Um, wheat bags and heat packs, I think, could be quite a big market, um, personally. But, you know, it might be worth looking at. Uh, let's have a quick look here. There's a company here. Funny enough, I just land on the same thing, right? And there's a listing here. Now, it's very low price. It's £8.50, right? Share your um, screen, Peter. Yeah, I'll share it now. I don't know if there's any. I'm just can't. I'll share my screen. Um, I haven't even explored much yet. I've only just literally looked at it. Uh, so here it is here. Right? Just different amounts of those beans and literally very low cost. Interesting. But like they're selling... I generally they sell very well, but I assume the price goes up, they don't sell as well. Um, well. Maybe it's not a good market. I'm not sure. Just the listing's pretty bad. But that, this here is an example of a bad listing, folks. Yeah, it's just horrible. Very bad. Should um, have a white background. Packaging could be better. Although... Mm. Let me see. What's what these? These are beanbag refill. Let me just see. Is there someone already doing this? Might be a reason why they're not on Amazon in fulfillment by Amazon. What they are. So here is three cubic feet. Let's see what happens. No, that's on fulfillment again. So these are beanbag. Interesting products. I'm in an interesting market. Go on. Pickleball. What's that? Is it is it coming into the UK finally? Well, uh, it seems to be like I found a pickleball net 
and um, a net set, which is selling ridiculously well. Um, I'll just share. I'll share now. My I'll share this in Zoom now, so you can see. That's the search results that have come up for pickup wall net. Well, let me pull it up here. Interesting. There's one. There's a, like a pack that's selling for about thirty four ninety nine. That's selling very well. Um, there's one here, 35. They are all selling well. There's a few could... that aren't selling very well, and there's a few that are selling very well. It could, though, Alex. This could become a very competitive market. Could be. Yeah, but first mover advantage, doesn't that exist? Yeah, I think these people have it here, do they? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, but I've been really going for like, you know, in America, right, during the gold rush. The people that made yeah. the most money weren't the people hunting for gold or searching for gold. It was the people selling the shovels. Yeah. Them. Just shows you. It's mad. Um, I'm just having a look, quick, I'm just having a look, look more into this market to see. Yeah, see if there's anything there. Because mm. you can segue off pickleball net into all sorts of different things. Hmm. Um, and these are the sorts of little pockets you can find like really good products for anyone watching. Like we don't want to be in these main categories. Like pickleball is a very niche market, but it's also very popular as well in within pickleball, like within, um, I, I think pickleball, I don't know if you would class it as a sub niche of tennis or is it a completely different sport altogether? I think it's completely different altogether. I think what I read about it is it was the game was created by someone who wanted something easier than tennis to play. Mm, um, yeah. So it's it's somewhere in between. It's sort of a mesh of tennis and volleyball and badminton, table tennis kind of thing. Yeah. So it's interesting. A quick look. Again, volleyball net. Sorry if I'm going quiet. I'm just looking at some different items. And we'll see. Do you have any other products, um, ideas you've you've um, been researching, talks you'd like us to take a look at? I looked at pregnancy pillows. Say again. Pregnancy pillows. So. Okay. Pillows. These human-sized pillows that pregnant women sometimes use to help support their bodies and their bellies. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Mm. Pregnancy pillows. Oh, I'm just looking at the market now. It's like a big sausage. That's what they are. Um, yeah, and some of them are U-shaped, though. So it supports the back and the front at the same time. Interesting. Good. Some. I'm just. I, I searched pregnancy pillows in the UK, and it's come with 356 results. It's a great start. And there are there are a number of different sellers, but they're all they're all selling quite well, which is interesting. Some are selling better than others. Mm -hmm. They actually look really comfy. <laughs> <laughs> I just found one as well that came onto my list. Isn't it funny? You they look really comfortable. <laughs> um, I found one here. It's £18.98, but it's own fulfillment. It's because of the size of them. A lot of them will probably be own fulfillment, won't they? Yeah, unless they're like inflatable um, or are they fill already filled with like soft i guess they're already filled with soft stuff so they're, they're actually they will be the size of the like nine foot or whatever this one is no they're you know pillows when you buy them they come really small and then when you open it up the air goes in and it's just it fluffs up so okay. i don't think they're this big they might be a quarter of this size when packed they're back so the package package yeah. dimensions Package dimensions are sixty-five by forty-eight by twenty-nine centimeters, so it's a it's a fair size pack, but it's not that big. Um, mm. It's almost like a kind of like a cube, like a duvet. 
Yeah, kind of. Um, it's it's definitely not as big as the images anyway. Um, and again, these are the ones I'm looking here are, are all their own fulfillment. Um, I'm looking at them here now, Alex. It's like nine foot, uh, like U shaped things. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's it. There's one here, thirty five ninety nine. Let's see this one. Is it? Oh, this is filled by Amazon. I um, I literally the ones I've looked at so far have all been fulfilled own fulfillment. I found one that's filled by Amazon and has a BSR of around between two and six in I'll tell you what category they're in. Home and kitchen. It's eleven thousand now. Kitchen. Yeah. And to be honest with you, the listing is rubbish. Now, one thing to bear in mind, right? Um one thing I'd be wary of is design. You know, people start getting into certain designs, colors, things like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's one thing I'd be afraid of. Well, I think you wouldn't have more than, say, a handful of colors. No, you tried a very, very few colors. Let me see the zip. So this one's got four colors. It's got blue, gray, pink, and purple. But you wouldn't need to have all the colors initially. You wouldn't need to have all the colors initially. Yeah, all, definitely. All I can you say is they something. sell really well. Yeah. Um, interesting. And I think in Keeper, I was I checked something someday. There's a way to look at the variations, and you yep. can see the variation that sells the most. So we could just go for that one. Ah, interesting. Um, the chart under the product. There's a couple of tabs. Where is that click now? on the variations tab on the Amazon page. Oh, yes. Yeah, in there, there's a couple of tabs and there's a variation tab. Lovely. Probably the most popular one is this one here that's £82. I think. Black velvet. That's just for price though, change. You might be... It doesn't actually use the BSR though, does it? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting market, this. Yeah. I think like, to be honest with these listings, Alex, are pretty rubbish. Yeah. Like I, even though they've huge reviews, though, look at that, like 12,275 reviews. Like there's a lot of reviews going on there, but I still think it's something that you probably could, if you built a brand around that, you probably would be able to build something strong over, over time. Yeah, definitely. Because I even know like when my wife was pregnant, we were looking for one of these things. So there's a demand for them. Interesting to work, maybe just work out in prices for it. Would be the first product I would go for, Bob. I wouldn't be like, oh no, I have all these pregnancy pillows. I wouldn't be annoyed. <laughs> I'd figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I would I would get pricing just to have a look. It'd be interesting. It's a very different product than we'd usually go for, Alex, but it's not like something I'd be like against. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'll look at it. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's the only product I found when I was trying to make my next list. So I just had this one which is why I hadn't sent it to you yet. I wanted to get about four or five. Well, that's a good one anyway. It's worth, worth exploring. Okay. I go for the most popular color, which appears to be black velvet. Yeah. I don't, pers I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if maybe color would come into a customer's decision here, but they're all very quite neutral colors. Yeah, I was going to say, I go mm -hmm. neutral. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I probably would do too. Um, gray or white or or dark color like that. You yeah. know those. You know nothing too fancy. I'm just segueing through some. Pro okay, carry on. I'm I think gray because I looked at one of the listings and the gray variation had maybe three times as many reviews as the next one, and then the last two had next to nothing. So they are tox genius. <laughs> love it yeah well great it is
I would probably grey as well. Anyway. I just think that's the colour I'd like the most. It's the most neutral of the lot. White could get dirty, whereas grey, you know, it's not as bad. Have you ever, I've just come across another product. Um, one second. Pregnancy Belly Bar. Have you heard of those before? No. No. Uh, you can, actually, no, I wouldn't be like considering looking at that. It's very um, not worth looking at. Uh, you, you just you just come across some random products. Here's a random uh, product, uh, guys. A uh, soft furnishings like virgin polyester, hollow fiber, washable, white stuffing for toys and sofas. Well, See, that's, that's actually someone selling the stuffing for toys. Yeah, own fulfillment. Twenty-seven sixty. I mean, toys get damaged all the time and you lose the stuffing, so that makes sense. Well, here's another one. Here's someone that's doing it on Amazon. Ah, but they're not. Interesting. Show? I am. I'm sharing my screen. Oh, I missed the screen. Sorry. There we go. What's the most generic key term on that then? Uh, it'd be hollow fiber. Just look that up there now. Polyfill, maybe. Polyfill. That could be it. Maybe, maybe it's not a good market. I don't know. But toy I know. Stuffing. Look at the I did toy stuffing and I got 872 results. Hollow fiber stuffing comes up with 227 results, also. Polyfill comes up with 184 results. Hmm, interesting. Mm. This is a very interesting market, also. The polyfill? Yeah, this is interesting. Um, a lot like there's some there's 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 a product on here. There's a brand called um, A R R Linens Virgin Hollow Fiber Stuffing, and they've currently got the Amazon's Choice badge. Um, nearly seven hundred reviews, and their images are absolutely horrendous. Well, the one image that they have is horrendous, and it's all it's all own fulfillment, um, and they sell different variations of, the, of um, sizes so a kilo 10 kilos two kilos you know what this stuff kilos. is is this sheep's wool i don't know if it's sheep's wool i think it's like um like a, a synthetic version of well 100 virgin polyester filler made in britain no i mean isn't polyester man-made though yeah that's like oil isn't it i think polyester yeah poly is oil so i think uh, well Whoever's watching this, do not quote me on that. But I, I think I don't think polyester is made <laughs> anything to do with sheep. Well, here's a good one here. Like, yeah, probably not. Yeah, it's definitely not actually. <laughs> made in Britain. <laughs> like, here's the big uh, made in Britain thing. So, this is an interesting one too. Like, one, three, five, and ten kg. They're all own fulfillment. I reckon that's an interesting one. I sofa stuffing. Let's see what how many reviews you got in that. Six hundred twelve. I reckon a good Just... listing on this stuff would do well. Yeah, I'm just going to Alibaba now and have a quick look. Um, you might find it hard to get an Alibaba. Well, you won't. No, you will get an Alibaba, but you can probably get it made. That's something you probably could get made locally. Yeah, um, so they sell, they sell this on this. This this is on Alibaba as well. I okay. just searched hollow fiber stuffing and there is plenty of suppliers there. Big volume, but lo well, it's heavy too, actually. You've up to 5 kg, but it's not, you won't break it. Oh no, you've broken my poly stuffing. <laughs> It's probably the best product ever to have, like as a, uh, like you, it'll survive the drop test. Well, I hope so. <laughs> oh, I love it. Do you know what? This research session started out like you know as they always do, a bit like oh nothing's happening here, and then suddenly it's like what have we done? We found all these markets. See, the thing is here, this is interesting because it opens up um, like a number of different opportunities. There, we've obviously got the stuff in, which is like this almost like. Um, cloud style cotton, yeah. But then there's also, I'm in um, another one now, which is beanbag polyester beads. So for refilling beanbags, uh -huh. that could be another market to look into. Um, this is this is what I mean about things changing really fast. Like we've just literally stumbled across this, which seemingly is the most boring product you've ever seen. I do not think it could get any more more boring than this. This is probably the most boring I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but I like imagine, I, imagine telling someone down at the local pub, like, "What what do you sell?" Um, I sell the stuffing that goes inside toys. It's like <laughs> it'd be so boring. <laughs> um, sell stuffing. 
I don't think turkey stuffing and be like, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's far too exciting. That's Christmas. <laughs> uh, oh, and I then like there's that. then you've also got I've just scrolled through here, um, fire retardant wadding. So this is another market you could look into. And this is all based on based and it's come from that polyester toy stuffing. There's loads of different things you could look into. This is very interesting. I think they use that for crafts as well. Yep. But I can't think which crafts off the top of my head. A lot of them, I'd say. Mm. Um, yeah, polyester wadding for up quilting upholstery. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, there's, there's a few here. I'm, I'm just literally scrolling through the products related to this item, and there's loads of different styles of stuffing for things. Like, it's interesting very very interesting i think there's a bit of opportunity there yep i definitely would say so yeah it wouldn't take much to stand out i mean you could easily look through i mean i don't know what people would be complaining about on the product but you could easily think of like ways to make the product better or it maybe it comes with some sort of well i don't know um I mean, what would you need if you, if it was a toy if it was if it was for a toy stuffing? Like nobody here is nobody here in this market for toy stuffing is offering anything but the toy stuffing. So mm -hmm. I wonder if there's any way you could offer something stitches, potentially, yeah, something that would help you fix, to, you know, anything that makes you stand out, like a toy um, stuffing, a toy repair kit. Yeah, you could. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, you could get really creative with this. Um, could come with blunt needles like those eyelet needles for, mm -hmm. and like a bit of yarn maybe or something that might be pushing it a little bit too much but um, yeah you could you could definitely come up with some interesting ideas and this would be one for actually looking for the frequently bought together um, and seeing what people mm -hmm. are buying with this so if I click on so I'm looking on this you share your screen Alex uh, yep Yep, yep. Um, so we've got this hefty number here. Frequently what together so dick safety eyes and noses. So interesting. Teddy bear so, repair kit. Yeah, teddy bear repair kit. I mean, I think most people will be using this to repair either pet toys, dog toys, um, children's toys. Um, even there, look, duck feathers could be another idea, another another market to look into yeah um but i wouldn't think much to stand out there anyway no not at all i mean if we go into i was looking at that company yeah like i can't see that see here like I, it's hard it might be hard to find i was really excited to open this up <laughs> okay something <laughs> black flakes Really excited to open my stuffing up. Um, arrived off cut sandwich between quilts, misleading. Okay, they're not very really useful. So I think it might be quite hard to find people complaining about what's wrong with this stuff because it's very much like you're you stuffing. You, yeah, it's just stuffing. There's nothing that can break or go wrong with it. Uh, I mean, this, this there's one person that was complaining about some black stuff being in there the stuff in but that is a very i guess that's a very rare situation um let's try and find another one see if we can find another example let's go let's try this one yorkshire homeware and again these are all sorry his own fulfillment as well um i mean maybe maybe i don't know how it would work but maybe you, you could um, some of the thing was good more than half was uh, lumpy okay interesting does not feel like this was cleaning enough uh, looks like it would have come out of all cushions okay cool interesting so the cleanliness is something people look for in this um, yeah look see there are some buttons that come with it you could literally package buttons together with this and that would be a very that would be a superior offer straight away you can even and package pack different types of buttons like a few different options so you can you know because people like to make their teddy bears look kind of old yeah 
that would be a i would 100 percent do a little bit more research into this market for sure but then also like see this stuff here bean bags um bean bag beads yeah you'd call that um bean bag beads is um so bean bag beads look at that 138 results this could be an interesting market so some obviously selling quite well still opportunity people... there to potentially Listing yeah definitely I, I would i would look into this market as well um there's some that are selling better than others Again, you could you could you could do you could use the same principle we just applied then to standing out by adding a bonus to something like this, or even I mean, if I click into one of these products and see, yeah, this, these these are all merchant fulfilled. So straight away there, if we can get this into Amazon, you stand out straight away with that. Um, so look at this one. Yeah, again, I think a lot of these people will not be sending them into Amazon based on the size of this thing. Um, but you know, you can still sell it. You can still sell them on Amazon, not a problem. And you can use Prime and get Amazon to fulfill it for you, not a problem. And reality is, like by sending them straight into Amazon, you actually have a wider market because people will buy off Amazon because it's you know you just want you know you're going to get it quick and reliable and go. you know returns be no problem. But also, Amazon will ship internationally. Here we go. Look, so they've got. Um, beanbag beads and then this is also like a liner that obviously goes inside your beanbag click on that, that liner click on that Alex will you please and again own fulfillment yeah there's a product on its own <laughs> this is an interesting market to look into for sure interesting do you know what we'll call it quits there for tonight I think we've done quite a bit it ended yeah. on a very good high um, we'll keep at it folks everyone watching at home um, hope you enjoyed tonight's session it's quite good hopefully we'll see you guys at an, another section session very soon um, and yeah it was, a, it was a good call also as well guys like these won't all, these coaching calls won't always be based on product research like if we if we start to get to a point where different people are at different stages in the journey then we may start putting on different calls so like pre and post Amazon training calls so like let's say for example you're still in the in the product research stage then you come to one call which is focused on product research whereas if we have other people who are literally you know they've launched products on amazon and they want to talk more about how to boost sales with ppc or things like that then we can do different calls for different reasons so then it's not you know every call is as valuable as we can make it really rather than just being focused on one or two things. But right now, everyone seems to be around round about the same stage. So it makes sense to do that. I mean, we can start talking about um, reaching out and connecting with suppliers if anybody needs that. But just make sure you use the Matmos chat as well for asking questions or reaching out to myself and Peter on there so we can answer your questions directly with a Loom video or whatever you need help with. Absolutely, yeah. Um, actually, on this call, we did a little bit of supplier outreach there earlier on for Tux, but generally... As Alex said, it's been mostly product research, but it just shows you guys how quickly you can find products. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Folks, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Take care. Bye.